Ezekiel chapter 17. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Each chapter is the inspiration of God. Son of man, put forth a riddle. Now, when I look up the word riddle, I found it interesting in the Webster's Dictionary. A tool for, glean, for gleaning grain to remove the chaff. Now, that's not what the kind of riddle is, but that's an, that's an interesting uh, definition of, of all the words that God could have chosen. Puzzling question. But when the modern Bibles change the Bibles, they bring the chaff back in. And speak a parable unto the house of Israel. Parable is a fable or allegory of something real in life or nature. So, God is telling Ezekiel, I want you to tell a story. But the story has a plot of what God wants to show. Jesus spoke of parables. And they're, the, they're an illustration. They're not fictional because they have a purpose that uh, when he gives an illustration about uh, farming, he gives an illustration about a guy throwing seed out. It's, he does say the Lord God, a great eagle, and we'll get into these definitions, with great wings, long-winged, full of feathers, which had, which had diverse colors. That means all different colors. Came on to Lebanon and took the highest branch of the cedar. He cropped off the top of his young twigs and carried it into a land of traffic. Old English spelling. He set it in a city of merchants. Now, this is where Armstrong gets England and the Israelites being brought to England. And that stone over there where all the kings and queens are anointed, whatever that stone is called, it's not Bible. So, but this is where he gets his teaching from. He, and, because of, and again, a tool for cleaning the grain from the chaff. Now what we're going to do, we're going to read the King James English. And as you follow along, you're going to see, I may make a mistake, I do. I'm going to read the words as they are in the Bible. Like I said, I may make mistakes, but I'm not going to change. As religions will. The Bible is self-interpreting. And we'll just keep reading on. We'll bypass Armstrong. He took also of the seed of the land and planted it in a fruitful field. He placed it by great waters and set it as a willow tree. And it grew, it became a spreading vine of low stature, whose branches turned toward him, and the roots thereof were under him. So it became a vine and brought forth branches and shot forth sprigs. Part 2. There was another great eagle with great wings, many feathers, and behold, the vine did bend her roots towards him, and shot forth her branches toward him, that he might water it by the furrows of her plantation. Well, that's a bad word. I guess you, if you want to get a, a, a black Bible in America, I guess you have to change that word, plantation. That's a mean, nasty word. It was planted in good soil by great water, that it might bring forth branches, that it might bear fruit, that it might be a goodly vine. <coughs> Say thou, thus saith the Lord God, shall it prosper? This vine. Shall he not pull it up the roots thereof, and cut off the fruit thereof, that it wither? It shall wither in all the leaves of her spr spring. Even without great power or many people to pluck it up by the roots thereof. Yea, behold, being planted, shall it prosper? Shall it not utterly wither? When the east wind touches it, and the east wind a bad weather thing in the Bible. It shall wither in furrows where it grew. Now that's the parable. That's the riddle. 
Let's go to science. Let's go to education. No, let's go to the Bible. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Say now to the rebellious house. I want to know who that is. Know ye not what these things mean? What? 17, 3 to 10. Ezekiel, speak to the Israelites. They don't know what you're talking about. Tell them. Behold the king of Babylon. Chapter, uh, verse 3, the great eagle with great wings. Is come to Jerusalem. Came into Lebanon. Verse 3. And has taken the king thereof. Came into Lebanon and took the highest branch of the cedar. So we see an illustration here that men are likened to people. Animals are likened to people. This tree, this uh, vine, this bush or branch is likened to the king of Israel, the people. The eagle is the king of Babylon. You know about Babylonian gods? Would you set up a Christian nation as a symbol of an eagle? Of a nation that God said is like the king of Babylon? You do know what Nebuchadnezzar done as the king of Babylon. A golden cylinder type thing. It's come to Jerusalem and has taken the king thereof and the princes thereof and led them with him to Babylon. He cropped off the top of his young twigs and carried it to the land of traffic. He set it in a city of merchants. He took also the seed of the land and planted it in a fruitful field and placed it by great waters and set it as a willow tree. Those great waters is the, uh, oh man, what's that river over there? Those two rivers, Euphrates. And that's a fruitful area where those two rivers are. The other river, I can't think of the name of it. But, have you had any problems if you read scripture with scripture? That the kingdom might be base, then might not lift itself up. The Jews, you're in a ill kind of dog kind of heathen, ask Jonah and Peter kind of ew. <sighs> That's why God did it to him. Because the heathen were ew. Good. Ew. Oh, God, why would you do that to us? You filthy. Get away from us. Get that pork sandwich out of here. Oh, man. God said, you ain't going to lift yourself among them. You don't even want to be among them. But that by keeping of his covenant, it might stand. God did not destroy them all. He kept a remnant. All right? But he rebelled against him and sent an ambassadors into Egypt. There was another great eagle with great wings, many feathers, and behold, this vine did bend her roots toward him and shot forth her branches toward him. Do we have any problem with this? That he might water it by the furrows of her plantation. That plantation is the Egyptian plantations of the Nile River. <gasps> we're talking about black plantations here, where the, where, the, where the Jews were servants in the book of Exodus. And what we're talking about here is another eagle, the sign of America, and it's a symbol of Egypt where God told you, don't go back. How do you like that? One eagle is Babylon, and he's come and taken the Jews. The other is Egypt, which the Jews is in Egypt. Can you come help us? That they might give him horses. Do you know what Deuteronomy 17, 16 says? You shall not go to Egypt and multiply yourself horses. Thanks a lot, Solomon, for teaching your people to do that. You see what that sin Solomon done? Wait, 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 back then. Did you notice what Isaac did about his wife? She's my sister. Isaac wasn't even born when that happened twice. You better be careful because what you do as a parent, your children are going to pick out. They are doing something that Solomon has been dead, 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 dead in the grave for a long, 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 long time. They're doing the same thing that Solomon did. They went to Egypt to get the horses. They have not turned to God in, in Babylon. They phone up Egypt. Hi, 
he help us? Shall he prosper? When Deuteronomy 17, 16 says, you're not to go there? No, he won't. Shall he escape that doeth such things? Or shall he break the covenant and be delivered? The covenant was supposed to be with God, not the Egyptians. The covenant God made with them through Jeremiah is go to Babylon, surrender yourself, and live. All right, they're in Babylon. But help Egypt. As I live, saith the Lord God, this is an oath by the living God that never dies. Zedekiah, 2 Chronicles 36, 9-13. Surely the place where the king dwelleth, that made him king, whose oath he despised, and whose covenant he brake, even with him in the midst of Babylon, he shall die. He ain't going back home. Neither shall Pharaoh with his mighty army. God acknowledges Pharaoh has a mighty army. And great company make for him in war. Pharaoh's got tremendous numbers of people to fight. By casting up mounts, they can make dirt hills to attack the cities. And building forts to cut off many persons. Egypt has the ability to conquer nations. And God says, don't rely on the flesh of man. Matter of fact, we read in the previous chapters, Egypt was one of the whores, men, that they gave gifts to. Seeing he despised the yoke by breaking the covenant, when, lo, he had given his hand and has done all these things, he shall not escape. He didn't come to God. He went to man. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, as I live, another oath. Surely my oath that he has despised and my covenant that he has broken, even it will I recompense upon his own head. Now, what is the covenant? I will never leave thee or forsake thee. I will always be your God. Always. All you got to do is repent and get right, and I'll take you back. They didn't repent. They did, did not get right. They turned into military forces. They turned to armies. They turned to horses, and they didn't turn to God. I will spread my net upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare. He sets up a trap and a net. He ain't going nowhere. And I will bring him to Babylon. So this hasn't happened yet. We're after the first time that Babylon comes in. I will bring him into Babylon and will plead with him there for his trespass that he has trespassed against me. I'm going to bring him to Babylon. I'm going to deal with his heart. And all his fugitives with all his bands and army shall fall by the sword. And they that remain shall be scattered to all winds, north, east, south, and west, at all points, 360 degrees of that compass. And you shall know that I am the Lord have spoken. The fact is, when you see your king goes to Babylon, you rest assured that Jeremiah is right. You rest assured that Ezekiel is right. You know what they do in the end? They don't believe either one of them. So there are people out there, when you deal in a public ministry, Oh, if I were to see God, Abraham saw God, Moses saw God, and they still sinned. The Israelites heard God speak, saw the fire, saw the writing of God of the Ten Commandments, the second edition. Did they follow God? They are seeing everything being done through the mouth of Jeremiah and the mouth of Ezekiel. Did they get right? So you got a problem with heart. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also take the highest branch of the high cedar and will set it. I will crop off the top of his young twigs, a tender one, and will plant it upon a high mountain and imminent. That's a, I can read my notes here, that's a high, lof, lofty, 
portion, position, in the mountain the high of Israel, will I plant it. Bring forth boughs and bear fruit. What is God speaking about now? He says, I'm going to cluck that little twig in Babylon. And I'm going to plant her back in the land. And she's going to be fruitful. And she's going to be healthy. And be a goodly cedar. So the nation of Israel is not only likened to a fig tree. They're likened to a cedar tree. An aromatic type of tree that mm, smells good. You know, you take cedar and you put it in your closet to keep moths away. It wasn't didn't Jesus say something where moths corrupt? And under it, doesn't this sound like a good getting rid of, uh, what was it said, the, the chaff? And bringing the wheat? We're reading about the wheat in 23. And this hasn't happened yet. Yeah, he brings Ezra and Nehemiah into the land. You wait till God settles them in the land when Jesus Christ will be sitting on the highest mountain because there will be no mountains in the millennium. There will be no hills in the millennium. That high mountain will be where the Lord Jesus Christ sits, where Israel is told that it will be given a new heart and a new spirit. And under it shall dwell all fowl of every wing. That fowl is a... Not a good thing in the Bible. Fowls are like in the devils. They're in that mustard seed tree. Not everybody in the millennium is going to be right. There's a lake of fire there. There's an army that Satan gets at the end of the millennium. But the fowl, the evil ones, will be resting in the trees of Israel. Getting the blessings of God, such as people have gotten the blessings in America all these years. But we've got too many fowls more than we got the tree, the blessings. In the shadow of the branches thereof shall they dwell. Shadows of dark. Christ is the light. Why are they not in the light? Read John chapter 3. Because their deeds are evil. They despise the light. And all the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord, have brought down the high tree. Israel thought they were so great. Look at us. We're of Abraham. You know? Don't you think it's kind of humbling for the Jew to, to realize when they get the word back in uh, Babylon that everything has been destroyed? Don't you think it was kind of humiliating for uh, Nehemiah to take his ass and start going for a ride? Hey? I want Nehemiah remember what was around when the place was there. It says in Ezra when they built the foundation, there were men that were crying because they remembered the old temple. And they were crying because it's a shameful thing what happened. The younger people that have not seen it, they're rejoicing because here's the new temple. But boy, it's not like the old. We've got a temple, but what was missing from that temple, do you know? The ark. And whatever his name is, Raider there, he ain't going to find it. The only way he's going to find it, if he were to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and enter into the gates of heaven by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel that Christ died for our sins, was buried according to the scriptures and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, then you'll see the ark. you got to get away from that, that the books of the Bible that don't belong there. Have exalted the low tree. Those little tiny people who did believe God. You know, if you love God, you're going to be someone low. You're not going to raise yourself up. You're not going to be in pride. You're not going to have proud. You're going to be humble. You're going to be meek, not weak. And Jesus said, those that are weak, meek and those that are humble, I will exalt. Those that exalt, I will bring down. And that's happening in this church age today. There are Christians. They are high on the hog. And how are they going to be brought low? They won't have any crown. They'll, they'll set off the heavenly smoke detectors with all the flames and the fire. 
Yet those that just do what God tells them to do, they'll just go on. Their names won't be known. They don't know the identity of And they'll be lifted up when God, when Jesus Christ takes the throne, comes down with a crown in his hand, places it on your head, and says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's how you'll be lifted up. And have made the dry tree. We're going to read about dry bones pretty soon in Ezekiel. Dry tree. Does a dry tree live? It's dead. To flourish. Now where does that bring you in the Bible? Where did a dead tree become flower? And producing fruit. Aaron's rod. It became a almond. There were almonds. It was an almond rod. So that picture of Aaron's rod is a picture of Israel. They're dead. But they're coming alive. It pictures the Christian. He has died to self. He has believed in Lord Jesus Christ. And he comes up producing fruit. I think... I think the leaves aren't almonds. I believe according to Song of Solomon, I think it says it's white. I believe. I may be wrong about that one. I, the Lord, have spoken. And as far as we read, and have done it. And we're at least the first captivity. There's at least two more coming. And they don't get right. So it's kind of great when we look at where we are as a nation and we represent ourselves an eagle that takes after Babylon and Egypt. I mean, if I was going to stand up as a nation to have a symbol, I would have a symbol as a, as a Bible. Well, we got to have something living. The Bible is living. You want to clear out a group of people, walk in a room with your Bible and open it and start reading. You'll clear them out. Eagle's an unclean bird. You know why God said eagle to the Jew? Because that's an unclean bird. Ew, it's gentle. I've already done that. I just took something that's unclean in your dietary law. You can't touch it. And they came and touched you and brought you to their home where you smell sausage and all kinds of despicable things. Where every house probably had a dog. Dog unclean. And the Egyptians were unclean. They worshipped the cat. That was an unclean animal. God really humbled that Jew. He had the Jew break their own law because they weren't following it anyway. Didn't we read in John today? Ooh. Here, Pilate, we gotta go clean ourselves because we don't want blood on our fingers because it's the Passover. We got gotta be holy and eat the Passover tonight. You take care of him. You just deliver a man over to be dead, to be killed, and you're gonna say, "Oh, we're, nothing's wrong with us. We're holy to take over God's Passover, which is in the law." You just violated the law by bringing a guy to be killed for no purpose at all. Well, he said he was God. You didn't tell that to Pilate. Pilate said, what's the accusation? They never told him an accusation. And had they said that he is, well, they, well, he said he's the son of God, all the miracles and everything proved it. We have no king but Caesar. That's a Gentile nation. I'm surprised Peter didn't walk up and slap him in the face. Ew, the Gentiles, get out of here. All right, bye. He made himself the Son of God. But when Pilate said earlier, what's the accusation? What was the accusation? The accusation, Pilate told you, for envy. He was getting more crowds. Here God sends those despicable outcasts, Gentiles, to come and get them. When Jesus is alive and living, they go to the despiteful Gentiles. 
Things have changed. God tells Peter, I want you to go to the Gentiles. Oh, not so, Lord. I'm clean. That ego is an unclean animal, and God sends those unclean people to come and get his people to humiliate them. He's trying to get them right. He's trying to do all he can to get these people right, and it doesn't work. All they do is go for outside, outside resort. What's America doing? We're in trouble. Turn to the scientists for global warming. Turn to China for more food. Turn to this nation to help us go fight this nation. Turn to this for this. Turn to education. Turn to uh, Obamacare for help. Turn to this. But why don't we just turn to God? The God of the Bible. And confess our sins. And tell God we have done wrong. And we may not understand, but then you have tell God we are wrong and tell God we need light as a nation what to do. You'll get your revival, but you're not going to get it. Because a nation under God is God's with a small g. It's not the God of the Bible. The few of the people that love the Lord and do right are the fewest of this nation. They are the minority. And if you were to take a symbol today that would represent this country, would be a nude woman holding a fistful of money. Maybe throw some drugs in there for health care or something. Okay, uh, have, okay, here we go. Have a nude woman holding money and alcohol beverage with money. That's that's what America is all about. And then put on her head one of those graduation caps, okay, for education. When well, they're graduating, but they don't learn nothing. But that's the symbol of America. You don't believe me? You haven't seen any television ads for you to take your money to go buy this car with. I don't know what she has to do with it. Made by people who have education that next year when you buy this car, you're going to get a piece of paper in the mail to say, you got to bring it back to fix it. Dedication. Made in America. Broken in America. Thank you very much.